Hi, I'm Lisa Chissis. I'm the president and owner of Flexalite. I'm going to show you how to install this fan radiator combination that we've developed for the GM applications. This will fit a range from uh, 1999 up to 2012. We're actually going to put this one into a Tahoe, but as you can see, here's what it looks like when it comes out of the box from the factory. So we've got an all aluminum radiator with a dual electric fan that's already pre-mounted to the radiator for you, as well as all the other components we'll need for the installation such as the variable speed controller right here, mounting brackets for the radiator, all the wiring and connections, as well as our breaker right here. Now this application has an automatic transmission and there is not a cooler included in the side tank. So we also have an optional transmission oil cooler, which is a part number 4118 GMT, which has brackets specifically for this application. Now the part number for the radiator and fan combination is a 57291. You can also get just the radiator, which would be a 57001. Our first step is going to be to disconnect our battery. Make sure your engine is cool before you do that. And we also need to drain the radiator fluids. Now this application comes with a belt driven fan. That fan assembly is going to be removed because we no longer need it. We're going to take this cover off. It's held together by seven of these uh, pop rivets here. So I'm going to go ahead and get the last one done. Just use a uh, flathead screwdriver to get this out. And once you've got all your pop rivets removed, then this cover piece can come out. We're going to remove the air intake assembly. There's a bolt here that I need to loosen as well as a bracket here. There's another bolt here. Got to disconnect the wires here and then there's also an attachment down here so the whole thing can come out. We're going to remove this fan shroud assembly here but before we can do that we have to disconnect a couple of the hoses. So this is just a ventilation hose that snapped in right here. I also got to take out the uh, top radiator hose here and I'll secure it up there so we don't leak. So to remove this fan shroud right here, I've got two pop rivets on either side as well as a bolt here. So all those are going to get taken out so we can lift this up. So I'm going to remove the top of this fan shroud, but I need to make sure I save this clip because we're going to use it later on after we install the Flexlight fan assembly with radiator. Now to get this back out, I'm just going to use a pair of pliers and kind of squeeze it to work it out. We need to remove this clutch fan assembly. And let me warn you, this is going to be the most frustrating part of the entire installation. Here's why. We need to support the pulley right here. There are a couple of holes that you can use to do that. We've made our own tool to do that. You can see how these two are set up here. GM also offers a tool that you can buy. So we'll secure the pulley with that bracket and then we're going to use a big old wrench to get down onto this nut and that's what we're going to have to loosen up by going counterclockwise. Okay, so here's our clutch and fan assembly. This is no longer going to be needed which should give us some more horsepower and additional torque. Okay, so I'm going to take out the bottom fan shroud assembly and this is no longer going to be needed either. Now we need to disconnect the rest of these hoses from the radiator here. You can see I've got a, a ventilation hose that's just going to come off of here. I've got a overflow tank hose that's going to come out of here. And then I've got the two transmission lines that need to come off. This is a little tricky. So you back off this clip here and then there's actually a C-clip that I'm going to use a pick to get at so that I can take off this C-clamp evenly. And once it comes out, the transmission hose will come off on its own. So once I've removed the C-clip, the transmission line is going to come out, but you're going to want to plug this up because it is going to leak transmission fluid down below. I'm also going to want to use some rags or, or a plug on the radiator as well because it's going to leak onto the engine if we don't later on. Okay, we're going to remove the radiator. It's actually being held by two bolts up here, but there are four bushings that we're going to keep for our installation. There's two rubber bushings down here as well as the two rubber bushings on here that we'll take off once we get the radiator out.
So this is the GM radiator that we've taken out. You can see that it is a single row and it has a uh, nylon tank over here versus the two row all aluminum radiator that we're going to replace it with. Okay. In order to get these lower bushings off, there is a tab in here that we need to compress down so that it will pull, pull off. The top bushings are pretty simple to get out. We're just going to compress it and squeeze it back out. Okay. Now we're going to put these bushings back into the holes, but we are going to do it a little differently than the way it came out. So on this side, we're going to keep the stock hole on the passenger side, but over here on the other side, you'll see that there's two holes. This is what came out. We're actually going to use the inside hole for the bushing here. Now the radiator is going to sit up against this bolt here, but we're going to cover up this bolt with this bushing. Now you may have a couple of those and these are provided in your kit. You're going to want to have a friend help you drop this radiator fan combination in and once you get it placed, you need to make sure it's positioned properly on those bushings. There's spots for it. Once you get it in there, it is going to pull all the way back like that. Now we're attaching the brackets for the radiator. There are two different brackets. This is the passenger side bracket and this